Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Bosk's Bounty video and welcome to episode 60 of Ask Bosk's Bounty. This is of course the weekly series where I answer your questions so if you do have a question for next week's episode be sure to leave it in the comment section below and hopefully your question will be included. Now I do want to explain the background today I presume it's pretty obvious to a lot of people but usually I have a setup of things that are related to the things that I'm going to be talking about in the video. This week's going to be a little bit different because I just wanted to put a sort of little kind of like a little shrine to Carrie Fisher of a very small selection of the things that I have in my collection of Princess Leia. So we have um, a couple of vintage items here and a few from the vintage collection. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to do that just for this week. It's the anniversary of us losing Carrie Fisher, which is, of course, a very sad day for everyone. So I just wanted to do my little bit in uh, remembering her, basically. But as I said, we do have lots of questions to get through this week. Um, so if you do happen to enjoy this video, don't forget to drop a like down below. And of course, if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really does help. And we'll get on to the first question. Usual Mike Television. Now, I'm sure you know who Usual Mike is. If you don't, he has a YouTube channel, but I'm sure you already knew that. Uh, great video, my friend. Question for next week. Fat Bib or Regular Bib Fortuna for the Vintage Collection line. And also the name pill featuring the Book of Boba Fett. What are your thoughts on this? So first of all, Fat Bib or Regular Bib? Now, when I saw Bib Fortuna at the end of the episode of The Mandalorian, um, it did make me giggle because obviously on this channel and lots of other channels, we've been asking for Bib Fortuna in the Vintage Collection for God knows how long. And would it just be typical from Hasbro to instead of giving us the Return of the Jedi Boba Fett that they actually end up giving us the one from the Mandalorian who was alive for about all of 30 seconds. But Mike, I think you know my thoughts on that. We definitely need the Return of the Jedi version of Bib Fortuna as opposed to Big Fortuna, as the case may be. In terms of the name pill for the Book of Boba Fett, I mean, just wow, I was sent this image and I do apologise if the person that created it is watching it or if anybody knows the person that created it. I'm going to bung it up on the screen now. Um, as I said, I was just sent this, so I don't know who did it, but I will give the credit to whoever did it if I, if I could find out who did it. Um, but man, look at this image of Boba Fett there with the Book of Boba Fett logo. I just cannot wait for Hasbro to start creating things like this. And I'm sure anybody watching this video looking at that image would just snap that figure up in a heartbeat. What an amazing card back that would be. Alex Anderson says, I have a question for next week. How do you go about collecting original vintage Star Wars figures with the new retro ones being around? Specifically, when you say you're looking for a mint loose representation, is there a little stamp of, of the date on the figure somewhere or could you possibly just get burned on a false deal? So I think with anything, you need to be a little bit careful and aware of what you're buying. But I think when it comes to the retro figures, um, you can distinguish them pretty easily. This is the retro collection layer and on the back of her leg you can just see this little stamp there um, and if I can look with my terrible eyesight it's got a little code on there I don't believe it's got the date but then further up here you do have Hasbro China there on the on the printed on the leg and that's called a coup or a country of origin and if you were to pick up the original version and look at the back of her leg. I don't want to ruin the cape, so I'm not going to do it. But on the back of her leg or somewhere there, there will be a coup or a country of origin telling you where the figure was manufactured and the year. And essentially, some figures don't have coups. They were cut off and things like that. But ultimately, you will be able to tell the difference. Plus, also, the retro collection figures um, are ever so slightly shorter. They didn't use the exact same moulds. Um, I don't know how they did it, whether they did a whether they did like a 3D scan of the original figures or whatever, but I don't they are not you they're not used from the same molds as the original figures. So they do come up ever so slightly shorter, and there's some features that you can pretty much tell the difference. What people are worried about are the capes and the and the blasters and things like that. You need to be extremely careful that you're not getting ripped off with things like that. Gabe Soria says, why is there a little skinny tip at the end of the lightsabers of the original Kenner, Luke Skywalker, Obi-Wan and Vader figures? Were the little tail end meant to be clipped off? No, they definitely, most definitely weren't meant to be clipped off. This is a vintage Luke Skywalker here and this is the little tip that he's talking about. Because the earliest versions of these figures came with what's called a double telescoping lightsaber, which essentially means that the little tip actually retracted back into this piece here extremely rare and extremely expensive these days but you can get them 
Uh, my friend John from the Action Figure Grade has got two uh, double telescoping Luke Skywalkers, they're called. He's got them graded. And as I said, not only does the lightsaber retract into the arm, but also this little piece here retracts in, hence the double telescoping. This one's just the standard one. And, you know, many kids playing with these when they're younger, this thing just broke off all the time. All of mine did when I was little. So it's a tough job to, you know, find decent lightsabers now with the with the tip intact. But yeah, you most certainly wouldn't want to wouldn't want to clip them off, my friend. Samuel, and I'm not going to try to attempt to pronounce your surname. I do apologise, but Samuel says, "Hey, Bosk, if you have Commander Pyre, do you think he is worth the money?" So I personally don't have him in my collection. My son has him from when we got the uh, multi pack Black Series pack from Galaxy's Edge when we visited back in uh, Christmas time last year. It's not for me. I, I'm not, for one, I'm not really a, a massive Black Series collector. Two, I really don't like the, the gold Stormtrooper. I think it's just one step too far. You know, we've got white, black, we've got red now from the uh, Rise of Skywalker, and now a gold one as well. We've got the silver Phasma. It, it just, it was just one step too far, and I really don't like the gold figure. So it's not for me. So is he worth the money? In my opinion, no, because I wouldn't buy it. Uh, but my son seems to like it and I know other collectors like it as well. So everyone has their opinions on these things. But for me, yeah, not a fan. Nivaldo Rodriguez says, hey, Bosk, I have a kind of a silly question, but I'm generally curious about it. Do you think the Frog Lady will make it into the Vintage Collection or Black Series? Great video, by the way. Keep up with the good work. Support from Brazil. All the way from Brazil. Thank you, my friend. Uh, the Frog Lady. I think probably more likely to see her in the Black Series first than the Vintage Collection. Although the Vintage Collection generally, or 3.75, historically, you know, we've managed to get the background characters, but I think those days have kind of changed now. We struggle to get the main characters, really. But um, Frog Lady, is she a main character? She's in two episodes, isn't she? She's a main character in one episode. Is she a big enough character? Is there enough people out there that want her in the collection? I'm not sure if there is, but, you know, I would love it. I would love that figure in the collection, but, you know, not over someone like Paz Vizsla, for example. Um, I, would, I would definitely prefer that. And here we have a question about Paz Vizsla. So Ben Wong says, hey, boss, quick question. What do you think the demand for the Vintage Collection Heavy Infantry Mandalorian? The chances of Hasbro making one, and of course, would you like to have one? 100%. It's one of my favourite Black Series figures that I own. I don't own many loose, and it is one of my favourite uh, Black Series figures. It's a, it's a great figure. And it would translate into the Vintage Collection very, very well. I'm sure we'll get that figure. It's it's a no-brainer for me. It would sell like hotcakes. I think the demand is is 100% there for that figure. It's an extremely cool character. So, yeah. Hopefully next year we'll get that. 1980s and Star Wars guy says, Do you reckon there will ever be an old Master Maul figure in the vintage collection? I'm not sure about an old Master Maul, but we're apparently getting the uh, Maul from the Clone Wars next year. I think he's got the mechanical legs then, hasn't he? So, um, we, will, we will be getting that figure. I'm not too sure what you mean by Old Master Maul. Do you mean the one that's in Solo? I'm not sure if it'll look anything like that, but we're definitely getting a Clone Wars Darth Maul next year. OV Ban Kenobi says, Hi Bosk, this fall, the Vintage Collection Millennium Falcon, the original was from a childhood dream of mine, and HasLab Razorcrest pulled me into the Vintage Collection figures, and I really love them, just as I love your videos. Thank you very much, my friend. I also have some loose vintage figures I bought decades ago, and I just realized a couple of them have become sticky. Have you experienced anything like this with old figures? Thank you and keep up the awesome work. So yeah, I think that's fairly common with the older figures, whether it's decades old grease and grime and mucky fingers that have been playing with them that it's done that, or if it's something to do with the plastic that makes them go sticky. I've got a couple of figures that are like that. Um, and to be honest, if you want to sort that out, it's quite easy. Just very, very carefully use some hot, soapy water. Nothing's going to shed the paint off or anything like that. And just, just carefully give them a little wash. Baby wipes are also quite good. But obviously don't, you know, just be very careful with them not to strip the paint off or rub any of the paint off. Um, but you can clean those and you can stop them from being uh, sticky. Brickstar Lord says, question for next week. I'm planning on getting a Vintage Collection Stormtrooper, but I don't know which one is better. Can you help me? Yep, 100%. It's VC140, the Rogue One Stormtrooper. That is the only Stormtrooper that you will need from, from now on. Daniel Boswell says, great episode as usual. Now that we've been through two seasons of The Mandalorian, which scene would you want to recreate with Vintage Collection characters? Oh man, there is, there's a lot to choose from, but a couple of scenes that stick out for me, 
uh, always involve the the Empire. I love the stormtroopers and I love the battles. So uh, the first episode that we got to see Bo-Katan when they go up onto that cruiser, I would love to recreate that with those three Mandalorians and a bunch of stormtroopers. That would be pretty damn awesome. And also, of course, the final episode where they're fighting on Moff Gideon's cruiser when you've got the four female characters up against all of the uh, all of the stormtroopers. That would be pretty awesome as well. I'm sure there's loads of other scenes that we could create, but those those stick out for me. Perhaps the one that was filmed on the Hollywood Hills as well with Fett and Fennec Shan and all the stormtroopers, the mortar trooper when we get him, that'd be pretty awesome as well. So there's three for you, Daniel. David Gherkin says, with the fifth anniversary of Rogue One coming, what are your top vintage collection figures you want to see? I want Krennic, Bodhi, Baze, Merrick and Saw Gerrera. I'm going to make a whole video about the most my most wanted figures from Rogue One, but you've mentioned a few pretty good ones that would definitely be in the list. Krennic is a must for me. And although I do like the version that we got in the 5 POA line, I want to see him in his sort of wet gear, if you like, you know, that he wears at the start of the film and also on that sort of really dark planet where Galen Erso dies, essentially. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen the film. Um, I like that outfit that he wears then. That'd be pretty cool. But of course, we need ba Baze Malbus now to go with our Chirrut Mway figure. Merrick is a is a must, you know, the blue leader. And of course, Saw Gerrera and his buddy's two tubes as well. He would look great. Fantasy Brick says, Great video as always, Tim. If Little Boss could get one Kenner figure, which one would he get? Merry Christmas and keep up the great work. Well, I think that's probably best if I let him answer that for you. Probably Luke Skywalker in Stormtrooper Disguise and the Jawa. Okay, that's two, but they're two very good choices. One of those is extremely expensive and the other one... I don't know, a Jawa, you could probably maybe be able to pick up a Jawa, but two very good choices there. I hope that's answered your question. Ben Arkham NJPW says, do you think Bosk and Dengar could be in the book of Boba Fett? I've got a strong feeling that they will be. Um, either them or Forlom and Zuckus. I can just see them bringing those characters back. They're connected in some way to Boba Fett, aren't they? And, you know, they brought Bib Fortuna back, even though they killed him pretty much straight away. But um, I can see Bosk and Dengar and maybe a few of the other bounty hunters being in it. And to be honest, that would be awesome if they did that. Andy G says, hello there. I really enjoy your videos. Thank you very much, Andy. Thanks for all the content you supply. Questions for next week. Do you have or know of a good protective case for the credit collection heavy infantry Mandalorian because it has the larger card back? Um... I don't personally own one and I think the most likely places that you'll be able to find one or some or a company that has made those is um, I think they're called deflector.co have a look at them on the internet deflector.co or figure shield I would imagine one of those at some point will create a case for that large card back second do you think that some of the old rebel and imperial fighters may make their way back into the vintage collection I would really like the B-Wing, A-Wing, Y-Wing and TIE Interceptor in the vintage style. Um, never say never. I mean, I think they kind of re-release things when it's sort of connected to something else. So, for example, we've got the Slave 1 this year. And obviously that's connected now we know to the Mandalorian. And of course it came out in the year that the Empire Strikes Back was 40 years old. Uh, the Millennium Falcon was re-released. That's connected to Galaxy's Edge. You know, they've got the whole life-size Falcon in Galaxy's Edge. So I think there needs to be something that connects them. B-Wing, A-Wing, Y-Wing. I think if they're in any of the new shows, maybe Rogue Squadron, something like that, then you, you could probably see something re-released along those lines. But I don't think they'll just do it for the sake of it, you know, just give you a snow speeder or whatever. I don't think that's going to happen. Luis Silva says, Hello, Boss Bounty. Love the show. Thank you, Luis. Do you think we can get some future remodels for past figures of the vintage collection like General Grievous. Thank you so much. I think they're going through them slowly, aren't they? Giving us some of the main characters in the sort of uh, repack waves, as they call them. Um, whether they'll get around to General Grievous, I, I certainly hope so, because me personally, I don't have that one carded. And um, when I try and do get one carded, I'll probably go for the foil variant, if I'm honest. Um, so I hope, hopefully they will do, you know, if they're going to do repacks, which they are, and there's no getting away from the fact that they're going to do repacks and reissues, then, you know, give us the best characters, give us the best figures. That's what I say. So hopefully, my friend, but 
who can say what's going to happen in the future. DV Maggio 75 says, hi Tim, I've been watching your videos for some months now. Good job. Thank you very much, my friend. A question for next week. What would you say if I told you I let my five-year-old son play with my collection? Power of the Force, Legacy, 30th Anniversary, Vintage Collection and Black Series. He is not interested in the vintage fi figures, but he loves the movies and the new figures. I even got him the barge on eBay for his sixth birthday. I hope you don't get a heart attack. Greetings from Berlin, Daniel. Uh, well, he's, a, he's probably the luckiest kid on the earth if he's got a barge um, for his birthday. Wow, what a present that is. Uh, but to be honest, that doesn't give me a heart attack at all. My son, you know, plays, he opens vintage collection figures. I bought him a Nikto. Um, <laughs> and Nikto now goes for like 80, 90 pounds on eBay. And he opened him. And I don't even have a Nikto loose. So um, he plays with some of my figures. Obviously, I don't let him loose on some of the more expensive items. But that's what these Star Wars figures are ultimately for. They're for playing with, you know, they're for kids to play with. And, you know, listening outside his door listening to his games of playing star wars it takes me right back to when i was a kid and i used to play with star wars figures and back then no one knew the worth of them so you know it's completely innocent back then but i think that's what they're for so no it doesn't give me a heart attack possibly the barge you know you don't really want those sails breaking or anything like that um but i'm sure he'll be fine all right then guys that's it for this week don't forget to drop a like down below and subscribe if you're new to the channel for future star wars videos got loads and loads of content coming up thank you very much for watching and we shall see you on the next one